Sup, this is Gregatron. Happy Sunday. I hope everybody's having a good weekend. Three day weekend for some people. And I hope you like my shirt. Yeah. Shout out to the good sir who bought me this shirt. It was a gift. Shout out to you. You know who you are. Also, shout out to D Rhino 419. Is it D Rhino or is it Drino? But this is kind of a follow up video to my last video called Trump One What's Next? My Thoughts. And he made a response video that I made. So this is kind of a response to both of those videos, a follow up. So this is called Why Did Kamala Lose? And I'm not here to bash Kamala. I just want to understand. I think I have an understanding of what happened, but there's a lot of people out there who really don't know what happened. They don't understand why she lost. So I'm going to try to unpack that as unbiased as possible. Yeah, unbiased with the MAGA shirt on, right? Because to me, it's clear, but to others, it's just not so clear. So the first point I want to make is I think the setup was all wrong in the sense that Biden and Trump had their debate in June of this year, which was really early. And about a month later, which was July, that's when Biden backed out of the race. <clears throat> so if he backed out in July... That only leaves Kamala how much time? And I'm not that smart of a guy, but do the math with me. You got July, right? You got August, September, October, and then the election is at the beginning of November. So that's why they say she only had 100 days to campaign, because prior to that, all the campaigning was from Biden, but they're not the same person. Well, they are, but they're not. I'll get to that later. So she only had 100 days for the American people to be familiar with her. And that's not a lot of time. Now, she was already in office, but you really didn't see her and hear from her a whole lot, which is fine because no one hears from the vice president ever, hardly, Unless that person does something like astounding or straight up, flat out terrible. In her case, she was the most unpopular vice president since Dick Cheney. But the setup was all wrong. She didn't have enough time to campaign. And when she did campaign, it was a mess. But I'll talk about that in a little bit later. But, yeah, had Joe Biden dropped out of the race at the midterm, I think Kamala would have been in much better shape. She probably still wouldn't have won, but she would have been established that much better. Because the midterm, it's called the midterm, right? It's halfway through their presidency. So she would have had plenty of time to adjust, plenty of time to transition, and the American people would have been much more comfortable with her had he dropped out either in the midterm or somewhere along those lines. Also, they never had a primary. So when Biden endorsed Kamala, he didn't give the Democrat voters an opportunity to choose anybody else. So I think Biden did that for a reason. I think it was a big middle finger to the establishment, even though he's a part of the establishment. I think he was a little ticked off that they pushed him out. So he endorsed her immediately just to give everybody the finger. Fine, y'all don't want me. Okay, cool. Well, guess what? Now you're stuck with my VP. Now what? Now what? Because they had been saying, essentially, they're the same, right? So now you're stuck with my VP. Well, the only problem with that is well, for one, the Obamas waited like three days to endorse Kamala. So what does that tell you? But the big problem is you had people like RFK, who he was running as a Democrat. But 
they weren't even allowing him to get in there for a primary and so many others. So RFK and others, they left the party because there was just no avenue for them to get that recognition. So once the Democrat voters were stuck with Kamala Harris, that was just it. It was what it was. So that's part one. Part two, I think, was the campaign itself. Not only did she have an not only did she not have enough time to campaign, but her campaign was flat out trash. And I mean trash. Like, let's start with Obama coming out weeks prior to the election, lecturing us black men. Hey, uh, the turnout right now doesn't look as good as it was when I was running. Basically saying he's disappointed in us. We should fall in line. We're black. Therefore, we got to vote for this black woman who he's endorsing, which it took him three days, by the way. And if we don't vote for her, essentially what Biden said last time, we ain't black. And it was just so belittling and nasty and mean and it was kind of rude. It reminded me of like one of my teachers from elementary school saying, hey, don't do that. Don't act like that. Don't be like that. Come on. Be a team player. Be a team player and vote for my candidate, who it took me three days to endorse after she was the nominee. So that pissed a lot of people off. A lot of black people got pissed off by that. And that's just one part of it. I mean, she wasn't hardly going on any interviews like that. You know, I don't want to talk about Trump in this video, but Trump went to Joe Rogan. On the other hand, Kamala went on Shannon Sharp in these bizarre interviews. What's the what's it called? Call her daddy, something like that. The Call Her Daddy podcast. So she wasn't even going on tough interviews. And she became a meme from the way she talked to the lack of answering questions to when she did answer questions, the same rehearsed answer about I was raised in a middle class house and my mom had a friend who lived down the street who was our second mom and we called her Nana and all this rehearsed stuff it wasn't working on the campaign trail it wasn't and she was just saying these it's like an infinite circle answers you ever watch ed bassmaster the comedian on youtube he portrays this character who the videos are called the never-ending story what he does is he goes around messing with people he's a prankster but he tells people these stories and the people are like, hey, buddy, I got to go. I got to get going. He's like, oh, wait, no, I'm, I'm almost done. And he just keeps going on and on and on. It's like the infinite sign, right? That's kind of how she talks. She didn't know what she wanted to say, but they call it word salad, right? But she would just continue going just to make it sound like she knew what she was talking about. But she really didn't. Because if you know what you're talking about, you can just say it without using a million words. But she would just go on and on. And when she, when she would talk, I noticed this. I would get lost into what she was saying. And even I'm like, wait, hold on. Anderson Cooper, what was the question? You know what I'm saying? But it was like, the way she talked, it was like spaghetti noodles. Like, this answer to this question could go in any direction, but she couldn't pull herself back. I think Trump calls this the weave. She couldn't pull herself back into what the actual answer is to the question. She would just talk and spew, but her answer had no meaning. Like, there was no solid 
premise and the answer. It was that's why they call that word salad for those who don't understand. But yeah, the thing she said, and I don't even want to talk about that laugh, but you got that. The fact that people didn't take her serious, I think it was a big reason why she lost. She wasn't tough. She didn't seem like a serious person. She wasn't a tough person. She was fake. She would use different accents when she talked to different groups of people. All these things just added up. But the big thing, well, before I get to that, she was fearful. I felt like when she was talking, she was nervous. She didn't make good eye contact. But the big thing, I think, what shattered her whole campaign is when she was on The View. You know that moment. She was asked by Sonny Holston, one of those ladies, what would you do different from Joe Biden? Because at the time, the American people already didn't want Biden, right? That's why he backed out the first place. So if the American people, a big chunk of the country is saying, hey, we don't want you anymore. What you're doing isn't working. We need a change. How do you then answer a question with, let me back up. She was asked, what would you do different from Joe Biden? She said, without missing a beat, I can't think of anything that comes to mind. And when that happened, everything blew up. Because people who were Democrat voters who didn't like Sleepy Joe, they were saying, wait, I don't like Joe and I don't like Trump. But you're now saying you wouldn't have done anything different from Joe. And then you had Joe saying things like, oh, no, she was my number two. Uh, everything I could have done back then, she could have done it, too. She was able, willing and capable of doing the exact same thing I was doing. So she wasn't able to separate herself from the man who the American people despised. And when that happened, everything just fell to the floor. So yeah, with that said, that's why I started saying she's the exact same thing as Biden. They're the same person. She's a chameleon in one way. When she talks to black people, she talks with a black accent. When she talks at a black church, she talks like a Southern preacher. When she talked to Hispanics, she would use a different accent. Asians, whatever. But now, everything was in shambles because she said, well, I'm the exact same. I'm the exact same. So you're saying we should have had a primary then. We should have let somebody like RFK get in the mix. But yeah, the campaign was trash. And she just wasn't connecting. She wasn't going on hardly any tough interviews. Whereas her opponent, Trump was going everywhere. Trump was all over the place. And she just didn't seem like she had the confidence. Like, say what you want about Hillary Clinton, but Hillary Clinton had some confidence. Hillary Clinton truly believed she was going to win. And to this day, she believes she should have won that. The difference between that and now is when Hillary lost and when Trump lost, they both wanted to see what the hell happened here. How can I fix this? How can I do better? How can we unpack this? How do we look at this and do better? 
the difference is with Kamala, she really thinks she had the race in the bag, but everybody knows she didn't. That's the difference. And she won't even own up to it, I think. But yeah, as far as her being a woman and a woman of color, that has nothing to do with it. Zero. So people who are out there saying, oh, y'all just don't want to vote for a black woman, that's BS. Because people voted for Obama twice. There's women out there who would have been powerful candidates. But when I think of a female president, Kamala Harris is the last person I think of. Well, for one, let me talk about this. In the 2020 race, she was the first person to drop out. So the American people wanted her last. No one wanted her. So how do you then expect her to gather up all the Democrat voters and independent or Republican voters? How do you expect that to happen when you couldn't even collect people four years ago? It just didn't make sense. Furthermore, without the primary, now you don't have your core base. You know how Joe Biden got 13 million or so votes for the primary itself? Well, she never had that. So she was scrambling on getting voters, but nobody was rocking with her. And again, I'm surprised she got as many votes as she did. But her whole campaign was based on being a woman and Trump is bad. Like, you can't do that. You can't just point your finger at the other side and say, he's bad, vote for me because he's bad. No, you're already in office. The American people don't want to hear that. Like, imagine if George W. Bush and Al Gore in 20... Well, that was 2000. Imagine if they were just pointing the finger at the other person the entire time. Nobody would have voted for either one of them. That race back then, I was a kid, I remember this. That race was so tight because both sides projected their beliefs, their views, and what they want to do, how they can make the country better. Whether Bush and Gore were right or wrong, they campaigned on those things. What I believe, what I can do, how I can improve. They didn't just point the finger at one another all day. That's why that race was so close. 50-50. On the other hand, this race was not close. Like you can't even contest this race because it's so not close. So that's why I'm making this video because I want Democrat voters and independents. I want them to understand what happened. It was a combination of Joe Biden backing out way too late. It was Obama spewing his mess. It was Kamala having a bad campaign on Trump is bad and I'm a woman and abortion. You can't just make a whole campaign on abortion and Trump is bad. You can't do that. And while I'm here, let me talk about these celebrities. Oh, man. Don't even get me started. I got to get some water now. Those celebrities at those rallies, they felt so disingenuous. They felt, in my opinion, so fake. It's like you're getting these millionaires and billionaires on stage to endorse you for what? Just to get these people out of show? Because the voters, they fall in love with these celebrities. But the people who are independents and Republicans, they don't care about these celebrities. The Democrat voters... A lot of them were going to vote for you anyway. 
whether you endorse or whether Beyonce endorsed you or not. So these celebrities, you had Taylor Swift going, you had Beyonce, you had Samuel Jackson, you had J-Lo, Eminem, Cardi B, who else? Oprah Winfrey, Michelle Obama, Barack Obama. She had all these people. And for what? But even those people... Exception to the rule, a lot of them were not even able to move crowds. The only ones, in my opinion, who moved the crowd was Oprah and Michelle. But even at the DNC, that's the Democrat National Convention, even those guys didn't really move the crowd. That guy, Steve Kerr, the coach from the Warriors, he moved, he had a decent speech. But, like, Hillary's speech was about being a strong woman. Michelle, kind of the same thing. But Obama had some energy when he campaigns for her. But these celebrities, my point to bring them up is it felt fake. It felt like they weren't real people. And that's one thing for a politician, but athletes and musicians, rappers, singers, they shouldn't come off as fake. But I remember when Eminem endorsed her, I'm like, this doesn't even feel like Eminem. This doesn't sound like Eminem. This doesn't look like Eminem. He had his head down. What he was saying, it's like he couldn't say it with a straight face. It's like, bro, what do they have on y'all? And people keep talking about the Diddy tapes. These people are coming out endorsing her because they're friends with Diddy. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> Let me lay that to rest. All those celebrities, most of those celebrities, they were friends with Diddy simply because Diddy is friends with everybody. So if you're a celebrity, you either bumped into Diddy at some point, you ran into him, you did a music video with them. You were friends with them. You collaborated in songs before. He produced something for you. So I don't even buy the whole, well, they came out because they're tied to Diddy. Diddy is tied to everybody. So you can't just say that. Anyway. See, now I lost my train of thought. I was saying they all came out, but they just didn't feel genuine oh i was talking about eminem i was saying he couldn't say it with a straight face it felt like something was off like yes i'm getting paid to say these things but i don't really want to say them you know what i'm saying meaning i'm simply here for the paycheck i'm not endorsing her because i really like her i'm just here for five minutes to rile you guys up so i can get a paycheck and leave and now I hear the Kamala campaign is in debt because they owe all these celebrities for endorsing her. Excuse me. But yeah, I lay that Diddy stuff down to rest because for one, we don't know. And two, again, we just don't know. So when I think of female president, I don't think Kamala the first person I think of, in Gregatron's opinion, is you guys remember Condoleezza Rice? If Condoleezza Rice ran for president, I would probably support that. Because I remember her when I was a kid, and I always thought she was this cool, strong, I thought she was tough. And a lot of people to this day say she was one of the best things about the Bush administration. But I just remember her being solid, right? That's the first woman I think of. The second is probably Tulsi Gabbard, which again, got pushed out of the party. She had to leave because the Democrats of today wouldn't accept her. So you got 
uh, Condoleezza Rice, you got Tulsi Gabbard, and what happened to Sarah Palin? A lot of people, didn't they like Sarah Palin? That was John McCain's VP pick. And I know some women personally who they wanted Nikki Haley. And I know some men too, actually, who liked Nikki Haley. So all four of those women, even Nikki Haley, I think they're tougher than Kamala. Because if you're going to be the president of the United States, you have to have some type of toughness. You have to be solid like a rock. You can't be swayed or moved or bought or sold. You can't be bribed. You got to have that mental toughness. But I remember watching Kamala and she just looked so frail. She liked, she was, she looked like she was campaigning for the cheerleading coach or for like student president at a high school. I'm like, she's not tough. She's not solid. She's a nice lady. She's a really nice lady. But I don't want my president to be a nice lady or a nice man. And Bernie Sanders said at best, I don't have the quote in front of me, but he's basically saying the Democrat Party is out of touch with the average voter. But back to the nice lady thing, you can be as nice as you want, but Putin and Xi Jinping and others, they are going to walk all over you. You're going to say something in that room with them guys. They're going to be like, and it's not even about being a woman. If they say, who is this? What's this woman talking about? They're not saying that because simply because she's a woman, they're saying, what's this individual who happens to be a woman? What is she talking about? What is she saying? They're going to laugh when she leaves the room. So she's not a serious person. She's not a tough person. People didn't take her serious. And again, I feel like I was listening to a kindergarten teacher when she was talking to me. But again, Michelle Obama would have been a great candidate. She's another one. And I think Michelle knew it. Barack knew it. They all knew it. And I was talking to somebody the other day who said this. Somebody said to me, if Michelle ran, she would have won against Trump in a landslide. And I'm like, man, that's a tough one. If Michelle won, I don't think it would have been in a landslide, but it would have been a hell of a race. Like, can you imagine? That's why I say it's not about Kamala being a woman. Because Michelle, Michelle would have gave Trump a run for his money. Like, that would have been the toughest race Trump ever would have ran. Like, that race would have put Sleepy Joe's campaign to shame, which Joe didn't really campaign because of COVID and other reasons. But if Trump ran against Michelle Obama, it would have been a George Bush, uh, what's that guy, Al Gore. It would have been that situation all over again. It would have been 50-50. And she probably... Whoever told me this might have a point. Like she could have very well beat Trump. And you know why? It's not because she's a woman. It's not because she's black. No. Michelle Obama is very popular. She's very smart. She's sharp. And she does have some toughness. Like when you see Michelle Obama, for one, she's like my height. She's got the strong cheekbones. And the, let me tell you about viewers. Let me tell you about human nature. The average person flocks to people who are of strength. So when you see a woman like Michelle Obama, she looks like a supermodel, like uh, Venus and Serena Williams. People are attracted to that. She's tall. She's got good skin. She's sharp. She's smart. She can speak. She can have all her ideas lined up. She actually would have said what she would have done for the country. 
how she's going to do it and why Kamala wasn't able to do that. So that's why I say people flock to strong people, even if it's your boss at work. If your boss at work is a strong person, the workers will follow his or her orders or instructions. But if your boss is weak and pathetic and doesn't want to put in the work himself or herself, no one's going to respect you. The American people didn't respect Kamala because she didn't earn it. Michelle Obama would have earned your respect in the same way Brock did. But the identity politics, that's over now. Had Michelle ran, and I keep saying this for a reason, had Michelle ran, it would have had to have been on I'm a strong black woman because we can already see she's a woman. We can see she's strong. We can see she's black. So she wouldn't have needed to run on that. Whereas Kamala was so weak, that's all she had was I'm a strong black woman. Well, you're not strong. You're not black. You're Indian. That was another whole kerbuffle. It just didn't work. It didn't work for all these reasons I'm talking about. So this ain't got nothing to do with sexism and racism. This is just common sense. This is about strength versus weakness. One candidate was strong. The other candidate was weak. And we live in a world where the fittest survive. If you're strong, you live. If you're weak, you die. That's not literal. There's people out there who know what I'm talking about. I shouldn't have even thrown that in the video. But yeah. Um, Condoleezza Rice, Sarah Palin, who was the other, oh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, they're the big three. That would be the dream team of female presidents, followed by a Nikki Haley. Yeah. I mean, Elizabeth Warren was more popular than... Kamala and she wasn't very popular but if Elizabeth Warren would have ran she's also too weak and frail she wouldn't have beat Trump if you put somebody against Trump like even look at Biden Biden's six feet tall Biden is good with the people he's always getting in babies faces trying to kiss them and all that Say what you want about Biden, but Biden posed a serious threat to Trump because prior to Trump, Obama was the most popular president and Biden was Obama's right hand man and they were actually friends. The difference is Kamala and Biden didn't come off as friends. They act like they didn't like each other. They act like they didn't know each other. So yes, Biden did become the most popular president in history. But the relationship between... Ooh, that's another good point. I didn't even think of that. The relationship between Biden and Harris was totally different from the relationship between Obama and Biden. That's deep. Because come to think of it, when Obama was the president, you always saw Biden with him. And they always, they looked, they were like bros. They always had a good relationship. They were always together. It was like two peas in a pod. And Obama picked Biden, right? The difference is Biden and Harris, they were not two peas in a pod. And yes, Biden did pick Harris, but he only picked her for the whole, I'm going to get the black vote. So it didn't work because he picked her based off of identity politics. Obama didn't need to pick Biden off of identity politics. He's a white guy, right? But Biden's the kind of guy who believes in diversity higher simply because she's black. Kind of like that Supreme Court judge, Katanji Jackson Brown. He said, I'm just going to pick a strong black woman. He said that. I'm just going to get a black woman on the Supreme Court. So my point is, the relationship just wasn't there between Kamala and Joe. And even if it was, it wouldn't have worked because the American people didn't want Joe Biden. 
So if they didn't want Joe Biden, how can they want her if he said himself she had the capacity to do everything I was doing? And if she herself said, I can't think of anything different I would have done. That's the difference. Obama was on his second term and he was already on his way out. He was more popular. So it didn't matter who his VP was. The Democrats messed up. The Democrats messed up big time. Had Joe ran and won, he could have slid out there after his second term started, which he wasn't going to win. But still, I just thought that was an interesting dynamic between the two presidents and the two vice presidents. Yeah, the relationship just wasn't there. And yes, Biden did sabotage Kamala. He put on a MAGA hat in front of a bunch of people. And you know what I think? This is just me speculating. I think Biden voted for Trump. Seriously. And I think Bernie Sanders probably voted for Trump. Because you can't just go around using people. And I'm not a Bernie Sanders supporter and I'm not a Biden supporter. But I can see through a non-biased lens. I can see these guys are being used. You can't just use Bernie Sanders to collect a bunch of votes. And then say, you know what, Bernie? Hey, we're going to pay you. Back off. We're going to give the nominee to Biden. And didn't they do the same thing to Hillary Clinton? They just used Bernie to get votes and then hand those votes off to the next candidate. That's what happened with Kamala Harris and Joe Biden also. That's why Hillary lost. That's why Kamala lost. Because the voters weren't genuinely voting for Kamala. Her whole base was Joe Biden voters. But with Joe Biden gone, well, what do we have? Joe Biden was the best chance they had. But they failed due to that debate. And I could talk about Biden a little bit more, but I don't even need to do that. Because we all know what his deal was prior to the first debate. We all knew what was going on with Biden. So if Biden was a strong candidate, a popular candidate, if he decided to drop out for whatever reason, Kamala would have been A-OK. -okay. But he was a mess. She was a mess. Obama didn't help. Those celebrities who came out, they weren't moving anybody. So the American people just said, no, nah, man, a middle finger to all this stuff. And this is how you get Trump back. It's just a number of things that happen. And it's crazy. There's more I talked about in my other video. But check that out. Shout out to all you watching at home. If you have any questions... If I was unclear about anything, let me know. I tend to say things that make sense in my mind, but it might not always come out sensible. But I try to keep it as simple as possible. I try to keep it non-biased. Because yes, I voted for Trump, but me as an individual, I should have the capacity to think what is going on with Team Joe? What is going on with Team Kamala? You know what I'm saying? And that goes for the other side. If I'm a Harris supporter, and if Trump won, as a Harris voter, I would want to be like, hey, what's wrong with these people? Why are these people thinking the way they're thinking? What are they seeing that I'm not seeing? What did I miss? Maybe I can ask this Trump supporter some questions. Maybe I can meet this person halfway. That's kind of what this video is about. I'm trying to meet other people on the other side halfway. That way, at least you have an idea as to where I'm coming from. So, that's all I got for you guys. Shout out. And again, just hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. 
If you disagree, hit the thumbs down button. If you agree, hit the thumbs up button. If you have something to say, you know what to do. That's what the comment section is for. I hope you like this video. I hope you have a good weekend. And peace.